craziness in L.A. Back to San Francisco, where Clay Thompson is live at the podium after making his season debut. And what took you to that level? Uh, I got the big on a switch, uh, Allen, and he reached, so I was able to get a lane. And um, it's funny because I didn't dunk the whole two months of scrimmaging, but when those lights are the brightest, I just felt bouncy, and it felt so good to throw that down. I did not expect that, and I'm very, uh, very pleased with my efforts tonight. You know, I, I missed a. I miss some shots I always make, but I'm just happy to be able to, I can, I can say that because I couldn't say that the last two years. So I can go back, rewatch the film and see how I'll be better for Memphis. Did you see the bigs coming when you went to the, to the cup? No, I just saw the rim. And luckily for me, uh, I threw it down with authority and I felt really good. I felt really good, really good, guys. Does that help you, you know, mentally moving forward to get that? You know. Oh, yeah. No, I can still do that. No, quit. ain't just being able to get to my my spots and rise up and shoot. It's only up from here. Take us through the, that team intro. You're sitting on the bench and then hearing your name called and just the reception that yeah. Chase gave you. Those are, uh, those are very special moments. I'll never forget. I'll never forget that this night. Um, I'll never forget the reception the Warrior fans gave us, especially myself and Gosh, it was fun, and it was worth every single day of being away and in that squat rack or on that shuttle shuttle board, and all the conditioning days. It was worth every single moment, and I'm so grateful to just just compete again. It's uh, it's been a long road, but um, I'm just also proud of myself for persevering, and it was a uh, you know a very special moment. I'm, I'll never forget. It was, I'm not going to say equivalent to winning a championship, but man, it was pretty freaking close because um, there were times in the past where you second guess yourself, you think you're going to be the same player or have the same explosion or whatever you want to, whatever term. And um, just to be able to go out there and shoot the, shoot the ball, play defense and compete. I mean, man, it was, it was special. You just said, you know, comparing yourself to who you were in the past. And a couple months ago when you sat up here, you said, I don't want to come back as a shell of myself. So what was kind of the decision-making process to say, one, this is the day that you're going to come back? And then just how do you feel, yeah. you know, in yourself? <clears throat> well, uh, the performance staff did such a great job of monitoring my conditioning, having me eating right. And uh, they weren't going to let me go out there and not be in shape and ready for an NBA game. So I give them a ton of credit. Rick, Kyle, Carl, Anthony, Danny, Science, Dave, everybody in that on that side who doesn't get the glamour that we or the, the glory that we do. They uh we had a lot a lot of long days together. We had a long summer in this building together and I'm just so grateful for them. They uh, really steered me in the right direction to get to this point. What did you think when Steve didn't draw up the first play for you to shoot? Well, I was so excited. I saw Lane in the basket that I just took took the opportunity, and it was a really tough floater. After that went in, I thought it was going to be one of those nights where I might be unconscious, but <laughs> missed a few shots after that. Might have been some jitters, and I'm just so happy right now. I did not shoot as well as I wanted to, but I'm just so happy I can even look at the stat sheet and see my name there and see the shot, my shot attempts, makes, all the st stats again. And minus two, that's no good, but at least I'm here because the work it took to get here is, it was incredible. So I'm just very, very happy right now. Clay, can you take me through two moments? One, when you sprint out of that tunnel for your warmups, the crowd like roared and cheered for your first six shots that you made in warmups. What was that like? That was awesome. I mean, I love our Warrior fans. They, uh, I know they were, Hurt for me the last two years, and that was special. I mean, I knew it was going to be electric tonight. I've tried to visualize this moment for for years, really, and gosh, it was worth every second. And I just, I'm just excited to kind of get out the way now, and I can get back in the rhythm of things because the last two years was different with rehab, and now, like a computer, I have to reprogram my approach to everything and. That's a blessing. So I'm very thankful for that ovation and the love they showered me with tonight. And I will never forget that. And that second moment was 
when they announced your name last in the starting lineup and you're sitting there, you look like for a second, you were kind of soaking it in that roar. Mm-hmm. What that probably was like 941 days in the making. What, what was going through your head at that point? Uh, just a lot just, wow. I can't believe this is here. Like, wow. That's all I could really think is wow. And to hear the roar of the crowd and give a yell at the end of the, it's just, it was, it's just, that's all I was going through my head was, this is unbelievable. This is worth every second. Clay, uh, two for you, if, if I could. First, Draymond wasn't able to play tonight, but he wanted to be out on the floor for your first starting game in a while. What did that mean to you? So much. I mean, I can't wait to play with Dre again. He makes my life so much easier as far as hunting shots and playing defense. We've been at the mountaintop together. We've been through some crazy battles, and um, I love Draymond's competitiveness, and it just felt good to have the full, almost nearly full squad again, and I got such a history with Steph and Dre that it was uh, really cool just to sit there with those two before the game and soak it all in. And speaking of Steph, when you came off the, or when you came off the floor, it looked like you were saying this is only the beginning. And Steph kind of said that as well, that there's no secret that the championship aspirations are there for this team. Now that you've been on the court, are you envisioning all of that in a different way than you were watching from the sidelines? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, now that I can actually feel the ball and feel myself, you know, making shots and cutting and defending. I, 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 I can see in the future where I will be successful and how I can help this team win a championship. I know what it takes. So do the guys on this roster. And before I remember during media day, it was right down your goals for the season. Every single player said win a championship and just to have that unity. I'll take you so far. And I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm just excited to go home and watch the, watch the film and critique myself and see how I can do better. It's uh, it's been a long time coming. Clay, two questions for you. What were the emotions leading up to tonight? Like, did you sleep last night? What did you wake up feeling this morning? Like walk us through just what this felt like. I actually slept very well. I took the boat to practice and if anyone has ever been a boater, boat days take it out of you. So (laughs) I was very happy to, I mean, it was such a beautiful day. Like yesterday was incredible. It just at any time I'm able to do that and I'm on the ocean and I see Chase Center and it just kind of humbles me and makes you realize how blessed I am. So it was amazing to have a day like that. And even this morning, I try to stay away from the internet, stay away from my phone. And just, I got outside with Rocco. We went to the park and I was around a lot of my family and they take my mind off things. But, um, and then I looked during pregame, sh- like during shooting, during warmups, I'm looking around. Nobody else is nervous. Not even Moses. None, none of the rookies. So I'm like, I don't need to be. If these guys aren't nervous, there's no need, to, there's no need for me to be nervous. So that helped me a lot because these guys look calm and cool, collected, like they've done this before. And that, that helped a lot. And then now that you've arrived at this moment, um, you've alluded to this. Some of the guys have alluded to this. Just those dark days. Like, were there times when you didn't think that you'd get to where you are right now? Yeah, that's completely natural. It's just when you tear a ligament or ACL or it just takes so much time to build up that muscle again. And um, then you have the thoughts like, will I have the same pop? Will I have the same responsive reflexes? And I feel like myself. And it just took a few minutes of jitters. And gosh, it just felt good to play. It's just something I really, really love to do is play basketball. I've loved since I was a little kid. Hey, Clay, uh, given your guys' history together with, you know, three titles and different shooting accolades, you know, with Steph, what did it mean to you to share the backcourt again with him? And how do you put in perspective what he's meant to you as a teammate overall? Oh, uh, he's been an incredible role model for me, uh, even better leader. And uh, we've had such a great history together as far as just, you know, playing for championships or for USA team and just growing our friendship. And um, it felt like it felt natural again. I mean, Steph is uh, one of the best to ever play. And um, it's just an honor to be his two guard. 
I mean, obviously it's been tough two and a half years not being on the court itself, but how did you stomach just not being able to be a part of Steph's moments when he broke Reggie's and Ray's shooting records? He, Steph knows how hard I work. And I was in, when he was doing that, I was supporting from Santa Cruz. I was competing against our G League team and they were getting, getting me ready for this, this night tonight. And I was there in spirit. He knows that. He knows. He knows I had things to do. So... Although it was tough having to watch, but I knew I had to get right so I could be prepared to help this team win a chip. Clay, I don't know if you have another Kaiser commercial in the making, but what do you think people can learn from your story? Um, <clears throat> you know, sometimes even the, you know, great athletes get knocked down and sometimes things are just out of your control. And, uh, you just gotta, you know, gosh, I don't, I don't know. Just there's always light at the end of the tunnel. That's what I learned, and to take things one day at a time. Because you know, I really look forward to this moment, but I didn't skip any steps. And maybe in the first, during the first rehab, I was over eager. I was probably playing too soon, and and no one's self made. I had a lot, a lot of help, a lot of help. So just to lean on your loved ones and just lean on those who care about you most. And the tough, tough times don't last. Tough people do. That's what I really learned. Clay, uh, a lot of focus tonight on the dunk and on you shooting like you do. Uh, but we know how you feel about the defensive end. We know what you've done for so many years. Where are you at there? Uh, you know, do you feel like you're close to who you want to be? Is it going to take a while? How do you assess yourself? I mean, well, seven for 18 isn't too good. You know, I had a couple really good looks. It just was. Sh- no, I'm saying defensively oh, play. I felt great defensively. I mean, I thought I could have had two box tonight. One might have been a bad call, but that's basketball again. So I got to accept those moments. And I felt really good. I felt great defensively. I felt strong. And I'm excited for the challenges ahead, guarding the best guys in the league again. Um, Clay, you know, we talked about, uh, all talked about crowd noise and uh, whenever you're in the game and, you know, we saw what happened at Oracle when you went out and then, you know, now, how would you describe your relationship with this region and why do you think that you get, you know, such adulation from when you, when you do come out? Uh, well, I mean, just being here since 2011, before all the great success um, and being a part of that, you know, um, I think that's uh, Bay Area people are very loyal. So they're loyal to their players, they're loyal to their teams. And luckily for me, I've only been in one uniform my whole career. That's so rare in pro sports. And the Warrior fans feel that, you know. Um, and um, I love them for it. We've been through the highest of highs and lowest of lows, whether it's losing in the game seven of a champion, of a record setting season or winning three championships. Uh, We've done everything together, whether that's celebrate or hurt from the losses. So um, they feel for me and I feel for them. Uh, cl- <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. Uh, Clay, welcome back, man. Um, Malika touched on it, um, asking about Draymond, but – you know, that was a bit of a sacrifice for Draymond as well with going in there, zero points, zero rebounds, like yeah. stats are dropping, you know, because of that. What do you think that just says about, you know, mo- a, lot, a lot of players aren't yeah. doing that. What does it say about you guys' relationship? I mean, I think Draymond only cares about one thing, and that's winning. And he does things that don't show up in the box score. And I think real basketball heads know that. Um Draymond is a winner. He has been at every level and very selfless as a teammate. And it just felt right to have him out there for even a second. I appreciate him and um, I can't wait to compete with him again. He's such a great cerebral player. Only able to get up 18 shots tonight? Yeah, I was 18 shots in 20 minutes. I mean, nothing's really changed. Peter, <laughs> universe.